Hello everyone and welcome to a short presentation on inner source and transfer pricing. My name is Dirk Riedel. I'm a professor of computer science at the University of Erlangen, uh, where I specialize in open source and inner source. Over the last years, we have collaborated and worked with industry a lot. It's a big part of our focus. And so in 2018, at the Inner Source Common Summit back then, I reported on 10 years of case studies of this work, how to get started with Inner Source, the best practices of it, our Inner Source Handbook, and so forth. All of that was qualitative in nature. And where we really want to go today is to become uh, quantitative in nature, to measure what's going on. One step in that direction was the work of my uh, PhD student, Maximilian Capraro, who developed methods for measuring the actual flow of work across organizational units. So you can see here how this anonymized organizational unit in one of our case study companies collaborated and how code flowed from one org unit to the projects, to the code repositories of another one. But we don't really want to take purely this commit level perspective, though it is quite important. Each commit is a transaction on work being performed. And so you can take an accounting perspective of uh, those code contributions. But what we really want to do is build an economic level on top of the engineering collaboration, on top of commits that flow between repositories, uh, issues that go across organizational unit boundaries and so forth. And when you start looking at that, you realize that there are different levels or different extents of collaboration. So there's the original product specific code or even a platform that company that people might collaborate on and it is not in a source yet. Inner source is when you collaborate uh, for reusable components uh, not specific uh, to your product. And this really becomes very powerful within a multinational situation, within a holding company. And now you're working across the organizational boundaries of, for example, different companies inside uh, a holding. And that means the collaboration, the intellectual property, the code, the issues, all of that flows across a tax boundary. It is not open source. It is in a source. It is not open source because the code, the components are considered competitively differentiating. If they were not competitively differentiating, you should make your code open source. But as long as it makes a difference for your products in the marketplace, it is competitively differentiating and it's inner source code rather than open source code. So as you look at such collaboration across organizational boundaries that are also tax boundaries, companies traditionally have taken a service provision perspective. One service organization within the holding company provides code to another one that Indian subsidiary, subsidiary provides services to the German or US uh, subsidiary. And that view of service provision is typically how compliance people inside a company look at it. Because as soon as you go across a tax boundary, even with the holding, your financial compliance department will take notice, will want to take an economic perspective of what's going on because you actually have to account for the flow of IP in the form of code across those boundaries because the tax authorities of the respective countries might otherwise think you're uh, shifting profits from one uh, company in the holding to another to the detriment of the tax authority and then they will stop you dead in your track. They will stop you dead in your tracks. So uh, such service provision is really just like subcontracting, if you will, and you can account for that. However, it is really not a good idea to structure the collaboration solely as service provision. Um, many companies who are not primarily IT companies, banks, manufacturing, all of them are becoming software companies 
and some of them think it's a good idea to structure the overall collaboration by moving software into a service organization. And that is such a bad idea because now you are moving you are moving software engineers away from the product. They are one step further removed from the product and hence will understand customer requirements well, will not be able to help the product meet the market requirements easily. It is much better to keep the software engineers close with the product to the market to the customers and that means the collaboration uh, between uh, the software engineers is not within one isolated service organization any longer but really goes across the different companies in the holding company. We call that collaboration for mutual benefit and that's the heart of inner source where you don't provide services to each other but where engineers collaborate for common benefits. So now we have intellectual property flowing perhaps into one shared reusable inner source component but it's really flowing from everyone there and everyone is also benefiting and taking out of uh, that taking value not removing value but utilizing the value uh, creating it with their own customers so that is a very different uh, view of the collaboration and on an accounting level or on a financial level you now have to account for it uh, very differently from how you your financial compliance department may have done it in the past which is you now look at it as said collaboration for mutual benefit and not a one-way service collaboration you cannot account on it on a cost grain level any longer you really need to account for it on a uh, commit by commit inflow outflow perspective for that the OECD has defined various methods uh, called transfer pricing calculation methods and you can use those to determine the actual price down to the individual contribution and then aggregate using an accounting perspective using accounts and transactions aggregate from there. If, if in our source collaboration was like said service provision then the cost plus method would have been a good choice because then you could simply calculate okay providing that component that cost grain piece of work from India to the US that would have created this following cost based on labor costs and then add some margin and so forth. However in the situation of collaboration for mutual benefit you need to use different methods from the OECD uh, set of possible methods and these are the transactional net margin method and these are the transaction and this is also the transactional profit split method. So my research group is working right now on utilizing these methods, uh, developing code to apply that to international collaboration between different companies and a holding company uh, and we very much would like to hear from you. If you're interested in this topic, we hope uh, maybe we can help you and certainly we would love to learn from your requirements and needs. We do this work for inner source specifically and transfer pricing. We also do it to get a broader economic understanding of value flows in companies across the boundaries that constitute taxable boundaries. With that, thank you very much for your time and attention and see you in the chat.